Hello, all of you wonderful people. Happy late Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a fantastic Thanksgiving. We'll just tar start talking for a second while people will begin to join us. It always says at the beginning, they're just telling people that, that, we're, that we've started. So I will give a couple of minutes. We'll get you joining. Hello, everyone. Again, maybe even just a word about Thanksgiving, whatever you'd like to say, or how did, how did it go for you? I know we had a lot of people celebrating from other places this time. So, so happy to see all of you joining. It just, it, it makes my heart so happy. I, Elaine and I, you know, we really, we really want this to, to help and inspire and bless the lives of, of all of you. And we are being so blessed and inspired by you and your comments as well. Oh, hello from Vegas. Hello, Vegas. So thank you. So many great people and, and, and wonderful circumstances. Elaine, I just saw that you waved, but I didn't get you to join. So maybe if we could try that, that would be fantastic as well. So many, hi, Kasia. I don't know if you're still on here, but it's so great to see you. Scattering, okay, scattering sunset. It's so good to see you. We're still gonna go on here. I don't know if everybody, those of you from Utah, we, we got some really good snow this week. That was fantastic. We celebrated Chris, uh, Christmas, we're not at Christmas yet. We celebrated Thanksgiving at my brother's house, which was very fun down in, oh my goodness, don't hate me, but I cannot remember the name of the place that he was. Maybe Dustin, you can write that on here for me so I can remember. We had a fun time. You know, I have 12 siblings, so we actually only had three siblings, I think four siblings that were there this time. So it was a little bit weird to have a smaller group, but it was still a lot of fun. I am so excited. Oh, in Roy, we didn't get any snow. What? We are, we are like blasted down here. Toronto, do you have snow in Toronto? Elkridge, thank you, Dustin. Yes, we visited our family in, in Elkridge. All right. Elaine, I'm still not seeing you on there, just so you know. I'm not trying to be rude to you, but I'm, I'm waiting to get you on here. Oh, there we go. View request. Can't wait to hear about it. Thank you for everybody for waving, waving as well. <clears throat> Came from Arizona to Utah to be with our three BYU students and loved the snow, launched us head first into Christmas. Elaine, hi, friend. Hello. So happy to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. So happy to be here. It, How's life? And I just, I just love you. It just it makes me happy to see this, this working out. So thank you for your great smile and, and the light in your eyes. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, I've had my little phone challenges, but I, I think I'm up and running. I'm so excited to be here too. And you know, Barb, I'm really excited about these talks. Why are you I, so excited? You know, when they, I, I was there and I listened to them and they were, they were sweet and the spirit was strong, but I didn't, it didn't dawn on me all the pure doctrine that they were really teaching and focusing on. And it's so fun to just study. I listen to them when I walk and, and now it's just so fun to study the written word and just see the crafting of these one, one and a half page talks that are just so filled with the secrets for happiness and for having Jesus Christ in our lives. So I'm excited to hear what you can teach us. <laughs> well, likewise. And, and honestly, Elaine and I have talked about this a little bit about walking and talking. It's a little bit hard to do it talking through the talks, but if you guys are walking or enjoying, we'd love to know where you're even listening to this. Are you at a desk? Are you in your car? Are you on a walk? Are you on the way to the temple? Are you taking kids to school? What's, what's your story? Elaine, Elaine walks all the time and she's, she's genuinely inspired me to walk more. I've had, for those of you who know, I've had plantar fasciitis and it has been a pain in the, in the foot to say the least, but I am downright and determined to get this thing going so I can get back on that, on those trails and walk along with you, Elaine. So hopefully in the future we can do a walk and talk and well, I've not hopefully, I mean, we will do a walk and talk in the future. I'm so excited. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. That's where I get most of my uh, personal revelation. It's really interesting. Yeah. I pray when I walk, but I also get a lot of just really, really good thoughts. So I, I enjoy that time with myself and with Heavenly Father. <laughs> I, I agree, Elaine. I, walk, I, I do love walking. It's anytime I'm outside, I feel like the Lord inspires us. That is such a, it's so true. Yeah. Elaine, we have a few people really quick. One sitting on a couch cross-stitching, one's with their foot raised, one's in Virginia, getting my coat and hat on to take a cold walk. One says that hers 
that's currently cleaning my bathroom in Franklin, Tennessee. I mean, we have people from all over the place. So, so thank you for saying that. Elaine, are you ready to jump in? I think we're ready. And uh, okay. good for all of you. I think it's, it's amazing how multitask oriented we are as women, but it's so great. We get so much done. And I love that. And I love, I love your spirits for tuning in and, and, and listening. So should we start with the power of Jesus Christ in our lives every day? Let's do it. Love. I love this talk, Elaine. I, I will be, I, I, for those who um, have any interest in what I was doing this morning, it was random. I, I was, I was up at 3.30 this morning, which is not necessarily normal, but I just had so much on my mind and so many things that I think about. So I actually read this talk again at 3.30 and it, it, it was very inspiring and humbling for me this morning. It hit me right where I needed to be hit. So I, I have a, a newfound love for this talk. I loved it before, but this morning at 3.30, somehow sometimes like walking, sometimes at that time in the morning, the spirit just needs to speak. And this morning I was definitely being taught. So anyway, Elaine. Absolutely. Well, I let me just start out with a quote from President Nelson. It's in paragraph two. Okay. <laughs> I think this is really wonderful. He says, in the coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. He will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. And I, oh, I love that, that we are here on the earth right now and that we will be eyewitnesses to these things as we stay faithful. And as I, I get the feeling that as the world turns around us, we may be oblivious, not oblivious, but insulated from that because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know, I, I completely agree. And I, you know, one of the things that I think of, Elaine, is sometimes they talk about these greatest manifestations of the Savior's power. And you think about the Doctrine and Covenants and in, in section eight, where it's talking about Moses parting the Red Sea and things of that nature, and they're and they're saying, oh, the talk. Sorry, the talk is the power of Jesus Christ in our everyday in our lives every day, by Elder Joaquin E. Costa. For those asking, again, if you want to go to my Instagram page, then I'm still bringing this out, but you can go there and you can and you can get the the QR code that actually has this numbered exactly how we're talking about it. So that's paragraph two is what Elaine just read, and we're talking about. That, that principle specifically. So, um, yeah, Elaine, I just, I just feel like we, we think that's such a big deal for the Moses to part the Red Sea, but I think about all the miracles that have been happening in the time of President Nelson, and I think of, I mean, even, even his discussion about China and learning Chinese and going to China and being able to do heart surgery on the Chinese person. I know this isn't in the talk, but, but that's, that's a miracle and that's power. And I, and I, I think again about some of these examples that he gave and these are the applications. So it's okay. I'm going to run through some of these, these powers. And sometimes we think it's, sometimes we think of this power and we think it's this power to move mountains and the, and the power to change the orbits in the world. But these powers, I, I just love, we have seen the manifestations of the savior's power. And then listen to these powers, a power in a widow who lost her husband while they were on the Lord's errand in Bolivia. We have seen it in a young woman in Argentina who fell under a train and lost her leg just because someone wanted to steal her cell phone. And her single father who now must pick up the pieces and strengthen his daughter after such an unexplainable act of cruelty. We have seen it in the families that lost their homes and every possession during fires in Chile just two days before Christmas 2022. We have seen it in those who suffer after traumatic divorce and in those who are innocent victims of abuse. And then he answered, that question what gives them power to go through hard things what gives them an extra layer of strength to go on and everything seems lost and then he gives the answer i'm, I'm not going to give the answer yet i think you know but i just want to point out the power that he's talking about is god's power all power of god is priesthood power and priesthood power can do many things but one of the things of priesthood power is it helps us it helps us move forward with faith it helps us call upon God in times of loneliness, in times of distress, in times of pain, and in this case, in times of loss, in times of grief. So I just, sometimes I think we think about this amazing power and how we want this power and we want, we want to be able to make all these decisions and everything else, but there's so much power in a person who's able to overcome loss or who's able, able to get out of bed 
even in serious grief, if, if that makes sense. So I just, I wanted to point out, I love your part about power and these greatest manifestations, I think for those who have ears, ears to hear and eyes to see are going to recognize God's power in, in very real poignant ways. Oh, Barbara, I so much agree. Um, I think the, the questions of the day are right there in that, uh, in paragraph, uh, what is it? Number five? Yeah. Is that what yeah. it is? What, the question what is gives them the power to do hard things. And you know, I think he doesn't talk specifically about the temple, but I, I do, I do believe it's our, again, our covenants because we're yoked to the savior the minute we're baptized. Yep. Uh, we keep the covenant to always remember him. And we have power because we have the access to the Holy Ghost. But also, when we go to the temple, it tells us in Doctrine and Covenants 109, we come forth endowed with power and angels are round about us. That's huge. Oh, it is. And I think sometimes we have these horrific things happen. And and we're, or a friend does, and we say, how are they doing this? I could never do this. We can all do it as we rely on Jesus Christ and have, have the faith in him and, and make our covenants. I think, I hope we don't all have to, but um, these, these examples are real, and we all have people in our lives that have been touched by these kinds of things. It seems more now than ever, doesn't it, Barb? Oh, absolutely. And Elaine, to number 17, I think this, this is actually really helpful because he does talk about this, these covenants. He says, he's quoting President Nelson, and he says, President Nelson taught, the reward for keeping covenants with God is heavenly power, power that strengthens us to withstand our trials, temptations, and heartaches better. Thus, covenant keepers are entitled to a special kind of rest. And now he's going to start talking about that rest, but he specifically, and this is something that we have been taught by leaders of this church over and over again the last few years is power comes by keeping covenants when we keep covenants from with god we receive that power and these are covenant keeping covenant making and covenant keeping people i also i'll throw another one out for you i love that he actually answers his question so he has the question he says number six in paragraph six he says i have found that the source of strength which i found in i find interesting and this is a discussion for another day is the connection between faith and power and president nelson actually talked about that in a in a talk about faith a few years a couple of years ago but he says i have found that that the source of the strength is faith in jesus christ as we intentionally seek him or seek to come unto him each and every day so so we have the strength in jesus christ and then he continues the prophet jacob taught and he cometh into the world that he may save all men if they will hearken unto his voice for behold he suffered the pains of all men, yea, the pains of every living creature, both men, women, and children who belong to the family of Adam and, and Eve. I always have to throw in Eve, <laughs> Adam. But, but Elaine, I think that this strength that comes through faith, so we have this strength coming through faith, which is going to lead to that power. And he says that in number eight as well. I'm going to share this. I'm going to tell a story, and I'm turning it back to you. Is that okay, Elaine? Oh, I keep, yes, this is, okay. you're, taught, you're saying exactly what I would say. Okay, so I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna share this story. So, so here he goes, he says, at times having faith in Jesus Christ may seem like something impossible, almost unattainable. We may think that coming into Christ requires a strength, power and perfection we don't have. And we just can't find the energy to do it all. But what I have learned from all these people is that faith in Jesus Christ is what gives us the energy to begin the journey. It's the faith, we have to have the faith to begin the journey and then finally, Sometimes we may think, I need to fix my life before I come to Jesus. But the truth is that we come to Jesus to fix our lives through him. We don't come to Jesus because we are perfect. We come to him because we are flawed and in him we can be perfected. So my little analogy, especially this part where he says, I need to fix my life before I can come to Jesus. So last night, I, I shouldn't laugh, but it's kind of a laughable, it's, it's laughable and sad at the same time. Last night, Gus and I are sleeping in our, our eight-year-old, her bedroom's right by ours. And she, when she wants something, even at two o'clock in the morning, she just knocks on the wall. It drives me crazy. But I mean, there's no, she just pounds and expects us to answer her every pound, you know, and we do. So obviously we're, we're ruining it. You know, I mean, we, we give her exactly what she wants. So, so I, I hear this knocking from Jane and I wake up, I go in there and I said, Jane, why, why, why are you knocking? And she says, and she says, says um Allie's crying in the other room and so she said 
And she said, mom, I'm fine actually, but Allie's crying in the other room. And so I thought that's, that's strange. So I walk over to Allie's room and sure enough, she was crying. She was laying there and I said, Allie, why are you crying? And she said, because I'm so cold. And, and I said, well, why don't you put the blankets on? And she said, I don't know. I said, well, well, Allie, if, if you, if you put the blankets on, you would not be cold and then you could sleep and you wouldn't be crying. And she just looked at me and she was like, okay. And I said, but Allie, but why aren't you putting the blankets on? And she just said, I, I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to. <laughs> so I, said, I said, okay, but Allie, when you put those, are those blankets warm enough when you put them on? And she said, she said, no. And I said, well, Allie, we probably have a good hundred blankets in the house. You know, we have people staying all the time. Why don't, why don't we get you another blanket so that you're warm? Long story short, she went and got the other blanket. I told her how much I loved her. Allie, we love you so much. We make these blankets available for you so you can be warm at any time that you want to. You can always be warm. We have heat in the house, all these different things. And as I left, I was thinking of this talk too. And I just thought, you know, Jesus Christ, figuratively, is not selfishly asking us to do things. He's not, he's not saying make these covenants so that I can feel better. Or in this case with Allie, put on the blanket, Allie, so that mom and dad can feel better. No, we genuinely want her to put on the blanket. We genuinely want her to be warm. We want her to be in a comfortable bed. We want her to have healthy food. We want all these things for it. And it's not selfish for us. And I think that's what it is with Christ sometimes. We, Christ has given us his atonement. He has done everything he can. He has offered the path. He has, he has, he has given us warm blankets. And all we have to do is put them on. And, and sometimes with Christ, I think we, we just sit there outside of a hospital and we aren't willing to go in because we don't, we don't want somebody to take our blood. But we, we need his help. And, and that's what I saw with Allie and I see it here. And sometimes I see it with myself where I just think, no, I, I can do this on my own. I really don't need the atonement of Jesus Christ. But really, he's already, he's already bought the blankets. He's already put them on the bed. He's already made the bed. He's already folded the sheets. He's, everything's ready. All we have to do is put them on. Anyway, I just, when I read that and I was thinking about Allie and, and, and the sad thing is really Elaine is she was genuinely crying. Like she wasn't, yeah. she was genuinely very, very sad and, and she couldn't figure it out. And to me, the answer was so obvious. And I guess maybe that's what's, that's interesting for me here too. The answer is always Jesus Christ. That's what we've been told by President Nelson. If Allie could understand that all she had to do in some cases is just look, but it's, it's all a matter of faith. Faith requires action. Anyway, you're up, Elaine. No, you know that. Okay, that's a great story. And and you just said the bottom line. Faith is a principle of action. And he goes through some of the things that we can do to act, to increase our faith. President Nelson calls it increasing our spiritual momentum. And he gives us five things. If we act, if we do these things, and his were... Uh, prayer, I mean, how many times have we heard that? Uh, scripture study, uh, making covenants every week. The sacrament is cr crucial for all of us. And then just maybe asking, what would Jesus do in this situation? Yeah. And, and he says, talks about uh, in paragraph 11, repent, keep your covenants, and, and have the guidance of the Holy Ghost. So, as we're talking today about this talk, and we've been talking about these conference talks in terms of the doctrine, the, the eternal truths that do not change, the yeah. why in this talk, what would each one of you say the doctrine is that he is teaching? I'd love to just, I'd love to see your comments. I'm going to ask that one question again, Elaine. What, what do you, the reader, so we've done this now for a few weeks with you. And we've, Elaine and I have gone through and done the principles and the doctrines. And Elaine and I talked before this, and we have a couple of doctrines that we would tie in, and we have a lot of principles that we would share. But if you would, just take a second. You've, you, you've read the talk, or you've heard the talk before. If you could just take a second and answer that question on this, we would love to see your, kind of where you're going with this and see how, we're, how, how you're doing. Are you, are you figuring out this doctrine? Are you figuring out these principles? And then also, how can Elaine and I help you? To learn how to do this better so if you would just take a second we'd love to hear from some of some of you and just read what you're saying there you've been writing a lot all, all along the way we got the plan of happiness okay any others what is the 
doctor and that he is teaching. Remember, we have we kind of outlined five. There may be more, uh, but we've got five that we talked about. Plan of happiness is one. The Godhead is another. Uh, the restoration is another doctrine. These are eternal truths that do not change, and they answer the question of why. We have the atonement of Jesus Christ. We, we the the atonement of Jesus Christ. There's a couple of those that have said that in action and the restoration. Yes. yes, because without the restoration, we wouldn't have covenants, would we? So again, an, an eternal truth. Um, you're getting it. Yay. It's you're getting, so you are getting it, guys. You, I'm seeing a lot of the atonement. That's what we were actually talking about was the atonement of Jesus Christ. I think priesthood definitely fits here. Um, I, I see somebody saying, I don't see a lot, of, a lot of doctors, but I see a lot of principles. To be very clear, when I have my students do this, sometimes they'll raise their hand and say, you know, Sister Gardner, I'm seeing the same doctrine. Is it okay if I write the atonement of Jesus Christ again? And I just laugh and say, of course. The atonement of Jesus Christ is in most talks. So don't you don't have to, the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ is you don't have to make stuff up. It's there. So if it, it the most, we don't have to entertain ourselves through the atonement of Jesus Christ. The atonement of Jesus Christ is the most compelling doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his plan. So yeah, we're seeing this more. If you could make an outline of the points you guys specif specify and make it in a post after, I would love to save it and share it with people. Oh, that's, make an outline that's, of the points that's you guys specify. Idea. We'll work on that one. I'm not yeah. sure. we're, you know, we're uh, both Barbara, so Barbara new with this. Will do that. Yes, I'll, I'll work on that. I think priesthood, yes, priesthood is another doctrine. Thanks, Elaine, for putting that on me. You're the okay, best. But once, so I, heard, I saw someone say obedience, and obedience is really a good one. It's a principle. It's a principle. So. So what would obedience accompany in the doctrine? Obedience is a, is a principle because it answers what we do, the yeah. what. And, and so think about obedience is the what, what's the why? And again, it's probably the atonement of Jesus Christ, the Godhead that we love him. Um, and I think he's talking about another power of the atonement that doesn't get a lot of talk about you know we talk about the atonement as the redeeming power yeah the power that makes it possible for us to change and to repent but it's also an enabling power absolutely and, and you'll hear some talk about grace but the definition of grace is an enabling power and that is the atonement of jesus christ so i think he's talking about that facet of the atonement, the enabling power, helping us have the strength to do things that we couldn't do on our own. And I'll just tell you, um, in the calling that I had as General Young Woman President, I accessed that, that enabling power all the time. And I was, I stood all amazed. Yeah. Uh, because there were situations and times, physically, spiritually, where I thought, thought I didn't have the capacity to continue. And the enabling power of the of the Savior Jesus Christ is real. Amen. And, and and I I would come to the end of a day in a foreign city somewhere and just fall to my knees, and thank our heavenly Father for His Son for for giving us His Son to help us to make it through this world. And the enabling power is huge. And as I think as women. We need to really try to focus on that because we're going to need it because we're kind of the ones that will help uh, lead the movement to change the world, I believe. I have no question that's true. We've, we have been asked by the leaders of this church, President Nelson, how many times has he asked that we, that we speak up and speak out, that we know, know the doctrines of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we do so in unique ways and that we do so in happy ways. I mean, it is constantly, the, the leaders of the church are begging the women of, pleading with the women of the church to understand the doctrine and principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ and teach them and teach them clearly and make a difference. I say this a million times to women all over the world, really, it is, if we don't do it, who will? If, member, if covenant making and covenant keeping members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints do not teach the truth, what other women in the church will? If we aren't willing to speak up and speak out, who will? We're the ones who made a covenant to do so. We're the ones who made a covenant. We're the ones who have the responsibility, as Elder Christofferson said. There's no other church on the whole face of the earth that has taken upon themselves the responsibility to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So if no other woman is going to do it, if it's not you, if it's not now, then who is it and when is it going to happen? It's, it's, on, it's on us. So I could not agree more. And that's, I think, Elaine, why one of the reasons we are so, 
we're so set on making sure and trying to help people understand the doctrines and principles of the gospel and going through these talks is because we see what the Lord is asking us to do and he's seeing what we're seeing what he's asking other women of the church to do. And Elaine, I, I saw somebody wrote write a question. And I, I just wanted to, this was on, she said, uh, what about me as a, as a lesbian woman? And I'm going to be careful with this. I'm just going to answer it quickly. And the, the church, the leaders of the church, and I would say God himself are very, very careful with this. A person who has same gender attraction or a person who is lesbian and has those feelings is no less or more or in any way any different than the rest of us are. It's, it's, it's the same thing with this talk. We keep make and keep sacred covenants with God. And regardless of that, we receive God's power. In my life, I know many people who have a number of, of, of same gender attraction or a number of LGBTQ interests or desires and things. It does not make a difference in the sight of God. You keep your covenants and you are great. And if we don't keep our covenants, we repent and get back on that covenant path. I, I may have a problem in my life in one area. I may have a distraction. I may have a, an interest or a temptation in one. All of us do. This is mortality. It wasn't if we need the atonement of Jesus Christ. It's when. We love each other no matter what. We all need Jesus Christ. God is not thinking higher or lower of person because black, white, male, female, bond free, et cetera, et cetera. That is just true doctrine. So let's make sure that it doesn't matter where we're coming from. We love each other and we all need the same doctrine and principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the exact same way. It's how we apply them that changes, but the principle doesn't change. All of us are children of our heavenly parents, every single person. Barbara, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, I think the next, the next talk will kind of address some of that, but we're all precious children of God, every single one of us. And, and I think that we're here to make choices that will help us to be able to be happy, but also to return back into his presence. And that's why he sent the savior. That's why the atonement, that's why the redeeming power to repent and the enabling power to give us the strength to yeah. go through mortality and the kinds of things that we will encounter as we go. And um, we're never alone. And I I do believe that you're absolutely right, Barbara, as we keep our covenants, we have him right there with us. He's with us. Yeah. And that, that should give us all great confidence and comfort. Um, he says, he says in paragraph 14, our covenants are not merely transactional. They are transformational. And they are. And that's what makes us different. And Elaine, he's quoting, he's quoting Elder Christopherson there. And, and I hope we understand that that is the purpose of the gospel. What is the purpose of, I cannot wait to get into the Book of Mormon. I love the New Testament, don't get me wrong. But I love that the Book of Mormon can change our lives. It is trans, it is transformational. We, we are talking about, we are trying to become like heavenly parents. All of us have, have chips that we, all of us have rocks that need, that need to be smoothed. Every single person on the atonement of Jesus Christ, doesn't make a beans a difference. We all need help. We all need each other and we need to make covenants because the covenants with God will make it possible for God to transform us into what he needs us to become. And I love the idea that when we are transformed as God wants us, we become even more and more unique. So anyway. And that's why we don't, that's why we cannot judge each other. We have to love each other. And we cannot compartmentalize ourselves and say, well, I don't belong, I'm different. We're all different. We all belong to God's family. We are sisters and brothers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the good news. That's the good news. And the applications, the way we choose to apply the truths, the eternal truths that we know are all individual. Absolutely. Very individual. And and I, I, I've been using this phrase a lot with my children. And you get to choose. And that was President Nelson. You can choose. Isn't the plan wonderful? Yeah. Because you yeah. have agency. Yes. A amen. And, and I think that that agency, and you're bringing us right into this talk by Elder Choi, where he says, do you want to be happy? And that's the beauty of this talk. He says, if you want to be miserable, break the commandments and never repent. If you want joy, stay on the covenant path. I just love, if you haven't listened to this recently and listened to his, the way he's speaking, he's so humble. 
He's so teachable. I just, I listened to this when he talks about his wife and he just says, I, I'm going to jump ahead for a second, but at number 16, he says, my wife says that our marriage yokes us together. And because of that, she can do things she couldn't do before. For example, ever since she was young, she has had a hard time going out in the dark, but it is not hard for her anymore because I go with her. She is short and cannot reach to the high shelves unless she uses a chair or ladder. But I can reach the things from high shelves for her because I am taller than her. Taking our Savior's yoke upon us, now here's the principle. Taking our Savior's yoke upon us is like that. As we yoke ourselves to him, we can do things we couldn't on our own because he can do things we cannot do for ourselves. So the doctrine again, for me in this paragraph, the doctrine again is back to the atonement of Jesus Christ. And the principle is when we make covenants with God, we are yoked to him and he can do things for us that we could not do for ourselves. We are dependent upon Jesus Christ. And then Elaine, I'm going to read verse 17 or number 17 on this. She's quoting Elder Bed. He's quoting Elder Bednar. And I love this quote. He says, making and keeping sacred covenants yokes us to and with the Lord Jesus Christ. In essence, the Savior is beckoning us to rely upon and pull together with him. Even though our best efforts are not equal to and cannot be compared with his, as we trust in and pull our load with him during the journey of mortality, truly his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And then President Nelson, he just quotes, yoking yourself with the Savior means that you have access to his strength and redeeming power. The reward for keeping covenants with God is heavenly power. This is tying back to the last talk as well. Power that strengthens us to withstand our trials, temptations, and heartaches better. This power eases our way. Those who live the higher laws of Jesus Christ have access to his higher power. Keeping covenants actually makes life easier. Each person who makes covenants in baptismal fonts and in temples and keeps them has increased access to the power of Jesus Christ. Elaine, I cannot testify of that any stronger. In, in, in my life, when I try to be rebellious or I try for some reason to not keep covenants or I try to not read my scriptures or I try to not do, go to the temple because God doesn't know the answer, the most amazing thing happens. I can't tell you how often I have gone to the scriptures thinking that I already knew what the scriptures were going to say and the Lord answers my prayer through the spirit while I'm reading the scriptures. Or when I'm going on a walk, I, I remember I was talking to Dustin about this. I remember one time when we were dating, I was just so frustrated and I was about ready to call him. And then I had this impression before you call him, go to your scriptures. So I opened up my scriptures and I actually felt specifically what to be, what to be studying. And I felt really strongly in that moment that I should read third Nephi. And I just looked at the a word on a page and it just said contention. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, Barb, you were about ready to make a phone call to a person that you love and you're going to be contentious with him. And you need to stop and take a breath and calm down. For some people that may, may not act be a lot, but that was the power of God in my life, helping me to find rest, helping me to be peaceful, helping me to step back and see through God's eyes. I, I needed that power and I needed that yoked with Jesus Christ. I, I don't believe I had that power within myself to have allowed that to happen. If it were not for Christ, I probably would have just been ballistic. But because of his, his help, because of his atonement, I was able to read the scripture. The Book of Mormon calmed me down. There's a power in that book in and of itself. The power of God came upon me and we ended up having an incredibly beneficial talk. It, it just comes from keeping covenants. And it doesn't mean everything is always going to be perfect, but it does mean that all of us need help. And in that moment, and in many other moments in my life, I needed God's power. The power of peace. Absolutely, Absolutely true. And to be a little irreverent, but not really. <laughs> Taylor Swift sings a song called, You Need to Calm Down. <laughs> and I think we can all calm down because of what you just taught us, Barbara. I, I really do. We were sitting around the dinner table last night. Uh, we've, we've had, you know, you have Thanksgiving. For those of you who aren't, are in foreign countries, you don't, probably don't, but you have other yeah. holidays. You have Thanksgiving and then you have it again and again and again because you always have leftovers and everyone comes to the yes. home where the leftovers are. So we were sitting around the table last night and we were talking about how grateful we are for the many blessings that we receive. And we, re, we re, just kind of relive some of the really hard times oh, wow. in our family when, as we've, and, 
how now we can look back on those and see how we were able to march forward through them wow. and we're blessed. Uh, the Lord doesn't change maybe the circumstances, but he gives us the power to change ours. And, and, and we, could, we just are so grateful. And again, I think you yoke yourself to the Savior. Yep. And you can be so confident in who you are. Amen. Um, I, I, I'd re recommend for everyone to, again, we call these, uh, note the quote in the footnotes, yeah. but read the, read the footnotes, um, especially I, I, I went and read number one, a talk that President Nelson gave in the happiest place in the world. And they call <laughs> Orlando, Florida, the happiest place in the world. And then he shares seven truths. And um, an elder Choi in this talk um, really focuses on some of those truths. But it's really wonderful to see that the truths line up with the, with the doctrines that we've been talking about. God is our Father, the Godhead, the Atonement of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon, um, the priesthood, the gathering and joy in keeping the commandments. Those are the seven things President Nelson talks about. So I highly, rec I got kind of, I get on these little side roads and just become so excited about what I'm learning. But I highly recommend that you look at that because it's not a talk, a conference talk. It was just in the church news. Yeah, great, great suggestion. I actually haven't read that, Elaine. So thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to go back and read that. Sarah Jane Weaver does such a great job with, with all of those things. So yes, thank you. And these, I, I also just love that, that Elder Choi is quoting President Nelson so much. I mean, he's just quoting the prophets and he's so in line and just, you could just, again, it's humility as he's just trying to stay right in line and do exactly what the prophets are asking him to do. I, this is so beautiful. Elaine, I also love in this where it's talking about the covenant path. I love when terms are defined by leaders of the church. So I love in number two on this, Elder Renland, where he talks about, he's talking about the covenant path and he says, the term covenant path. So. I, sometimes I will just put a, put a, I just underline in my scriptures, I'll just put defined by members of the form of the 12. I, I love Webster's Dictionary. I love defining words, but I love it when a prophet or a seer or revelator defines words. So I, I just, I, I love it. We will use the word understanding, for example. Understanding is, uh, Elder Bednar defines understanding different than Webster's Dictionary. Pride is one of those words. Knowledge is one of those words. So sometimes when I listen to these words, if you can start realizing how the, how the Lord uses these words and how the prophet uses these words, doctrine is another word that is different. If you study it according to what the prophets are teaching, it's different than what you're going to find in Webster's Dictionary. So this is one. He says, the term covenant path refers to a series of covenants whereby we come to Christ and connect to him. This is the covenant so, path. So what, what paragraph? Sorry, I'm in paragraph on? two. Thank okay. you. So the term covenant path refers to a series of covenants whereby we come to Christ and connect to him. Through this covenant bond, we have access to eternal power, which we have just been talking about. The path begins with faith in Jesus Christ and repentance, followed by baptism and receiving the Holy Ghost. We renew these covenants every time we partake of the sacrament. So then he's talking about it again, and then he's going to jump back into Elder, Rel Elder Renlund. Elder Renlund said, the covenant path leads to the ordinances of the temple, such as, temple and, such as the temple endowment. The endowment is God's, God's gift of sacred covenants that connect us more fully to him. So he defines what it is to have the covenant path. He defines the, he tells us about the power that comes as we stay on the covenant path. And then he tells us where the covenant path leads. It's just so beautiful. I'm going to add one more thing. He's asked here, are you on the covenant path? And just a reminder for everyone on here, the covenant path starts wherever you are. If, if, if you if we're if you're struggling with the moment you decide and this almost sounds like a born again statement but the moment the moment you decide that jesus is your savior and that you want to exercise faith in him and that you're willing to walk with him you're on that path and then you start making those covenants with him of baptism and then you receive your endowments and those things but the moment you decide to walk with christ as it says in the doctrine of covenants as it says in the new testament draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. When you draw near unto him, he will draw near unto you. The covenant path starts wherever you are, or the covenant path continues wherever you are, as long as you're willing to walk the path. So I, I love that he's defining the covenant path. And I love that he's asking us, are we on the covenant path? And just a reminder, it's you are, you're on the covenant path. If you're a part of this conversation, you're on the covenant path. Every person here is on the covenant path. And so critical to see each other that way. I, I love elder, 
President Eyring in his talk, um, and thus we see helping a student in a moment of doubt, I've talked about that so many times, but he has yeah. this statement in there where he says, we need to not treat people as doubters, but as seekers. I, I, I just love seeing every single person on the covenant path doing their best. Every comment that has been made that I've watched people as they've been commenting, every person is on the covenant path. We're all doing our best wherever we are trying to make covenants and keep them and living the laws of God. And therefore we're being filled with power according to our obedience. Interesting, Barb, this morning I was walking on a path and I thought about the covenant path. In fact, I gave a talk when I was a general young woman president called Stay on the Path. Oh, that's pretty great. much, pretty much that's what it was about. Um, but um, <clears throat> as I was walking this path, of course, it had all different elevations and so on. And I thought, what does the covenant path look like? Is it level? Is it level like this? Is it an uphill climb? Maybe not. And as I got to the next part of the path, I went downhill. And I thought, maybe staying on the covenant path is a downhill because life gets easier. Walking gets mm. easier downhill. Yeah. And so what does it look like? I guess it's, it's individualized again for each one of us. And he says that in paragraph six, right? The last sentence, yep. he says, as long as you seek to know of the Savior and pray to Heavenly Father, he will give you a customized answer for you. And then he goes on to say, the greatest lesson we can learn in mortality is that God, when God speaks and we obey, we will always be right. Is that the best? Isn't that the truth? I love that. Truth. Amen, sister. These, Amen. These men are just profound, profound truths. And I don't know if it came across as you're we watching uh, General Conference, but I got to be there and, and, and watch this man speak. And he's just what you described, Barbara. He's so humble, but he glows. He is just filled with light. And everything that he taught us is true. And I, and he, I love it. Elaine, I, I love this real story that he tells about being called as a bishop. Yeah. Where, I mean, speaking of that humility, where he just says, look, financially, I was strapped. He doesn't go into detail, but he just says, because of my own family situation. And he's just so honest about it. I mean, listening to him say this and just watching his face, I love that he receives this calling from the state president in this, like, very, very difficult moment. But I also love this. I love where he says that his wife didn't say yes and his wife didn't say no. She just, she just cried. Yes. She cried for the whole week asking Heavenly Father, why now? And do you really know each individual? She didn't get an answer. But I was sustained as a bishop on the following Sunday. And then I love this. She did not ask Heavenly Father those questions anymore, but supported me in my calling for six years. To be clear, that doesn't mean that she's not a thinking woman. It means that she is a thinking woman. She, it means that she has faith obedience. It means that she understands the prophet. She understands the key holder. Although she is struggling and she, and she doesn't understand what's going on, she is so full of faith that she cries and says yes, and she's on that covenant path. Sometimes, I think Elder Holland makes the statement, tears are the price we pay for love. Sometimes we get on that covenant path and sometimes we do cry. That crying is beautiful. The Savior wept, right? Our Father in heaven what weeps for, for a variety of reasons. I, I, I love, there's a great talk by Joseph F. Smith where he's talking about the loss of one of his daughters. And he says he was holding her through the night and walking through his house. And he says, I don't weep because, I don't weep because I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I weep because I love her so much. I, I'm going to miss her for a while. It's so, to me, it's just so beautiful. And I just love that he's willing to say, my wife cried. It was really hard. It was really hard for her. And then I just love that she says that she gets this answer. Six years later, she gets this answer. Because it was too hard for you to walk, I called him as a bishop in order to hold you and walk for you, walk for you. I just, <laughs> just such a beautiful answer. And I just love the honesty here. And sometimes I just, I love, I love it when people can be authentic and real. And I appreciate that with him, especially. Well, and it certainly teaches us a lesson about calling. Oh my goodness. And, uh, and, and sometimes they, they don't make sense and they come at times that are so difficult. Elaine, what about and, you? I mean, well, you were called to be the general young women's president of the church. I mean, really, can you take a second and just tell us? Well, you know, I, that came as a total surprise to me. 
But looking back now, I can see how the Lord prepared me. In fact, even reading my patriarchal blessing mm -hmm. now, I, he told me in my blessing, and he told me that I should be preparing my life <laughs> to be able to do what I, what I was able to do. Thankfully, I didn't realize what it really said in the blessing. I would have been scared to death yeah, my yeah. whole life. I would have just been a nervous wreck. But I think he gives us a little bit at a time, line upon line, and he just keeps strengthening us and teaching us. And many of the trials that we've been through, I've been through, I've been through with my family, I've been through personally, were the things that, that helped me have the empathy and understand the women and the young women that I met and, and try to turn them to Christ. And sometimes it's like tithing, isn't yeah. it? Something, it just plain doesn't make sense sometimes when you don't have any money that you need to pay your tithing. And yet, I, as I traveled the world and I saw faithful people with not very much uh, income yeah. faithfully pay their, their tithing, everything changes. And it's, I think it's the same with just, just serving and staying on the covenant path. Doesn't make intellectual sense, but it makes all the sense in the world, especially I think the wife's cute because that's kind of what I have to do. Looking back, looking yeah. back, you can see how the Lord just carries you through that. And I certainly can see that uh, with the calling that I had. I, 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 I miss that because sometimes that doesn't continue um, because you don't, you, you know, you're not doing what you were doing. And I, I miss that sometimes. I, I think that that mantle is so real. Elaine, there's somebody who just wrote, um, Marie, I believe. She says, I relate to his wife. My husband was called as a bishop the same week one, one of our daughters was diagnosed with cancer. Five young kids, six years of service, lots of tears, and such, and such much help from Jesus. I, I mean, Marie, hats off. I, I, I think, I mean, I don't even mean hats off. Like, thank you. Thank you for walking the covenant path. Thank you for accepting and supporting in a call. Thank you for being the kind of person that is so faithful. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate a little bit to share this, but I'd probably share more. My, my father was called as a state president and he suffered from serious depression for a number of years there. And I watched a man sit on the stand with a smile on his face and go home and sleep for days. And it was hard. And, and, my mom prayed and supported and answered the phone calls and and did everything she could as this loving wife but it was it was hard but i but as a as a person watching this one of the things that i learned from my parents is you easy but the lord will walk with you on that path and he walked with my parents and he walked with me i remember elder maxwell when he released my father's estate president after serving for nine years he said to my he said he said at that release day he said no one understands depression better than the savior you know i no one and so i just i throw these things out christ christ walked the covenant path too it wasn't easy for him either the atonement of jesus christ is not easy but he did it he had faith in his father he understood the plan and he fulfilled what he was asked to do all of us have something that we're being asked to do all of us will have this abrahamic trial of sorts and that's why I believe that the covenant path is so important because we we need God's help. We, we're desperate. I, I am desperate. I learned that from my, my dad. He was desperate for God. I am desperate for God. I am desperate for the atonement of Jesus Christ. I need his power so badly. It's not funny. Like, it's real. We need it. We all need it. They needed it in this talk. They needed it to pay their tithing. This young man needs it to, become, to come back to the church after his mission. We, we all, all need Christ's atonement in a different way. We're all... The closer we come, become to, the closer we come to Christ, the more dependent we recognize we are. That's just the reality. Absolutely. And um, Barbara and I have been decided we wanted to do this because we wanted to be with you. And as I sit here and do this, I learn so much from Barbara, but I'm also learning so much from your beautiful comments and your beautiful lives. Yep. And it's such a privilege that we can gather together. And perhaps find strength with each other and be more unified as women, wherever we are on the path. And we're all in different places on the path. It's like running a marathon. Yep. You're, you're really not competing with anyone. You're just trying to be the best version of yourself you can be. And I think as we remember that we're all children of our Father in Heaven and that He loves us, 
and he sent his son to make it possible for us to to enjoy this life to have happiness here really happiness maybe not the way the world shows us to be happy but the kind of happiness that i think almost i think there's a difference between happiness and joy but it's almost yeah. the joy that comes it's just deep and it's happy because you have done your personal best and you have know you've been helped you know the savior and you have relied on his atonement so i just think i'd like to to close my remarks by telling you that i feel a very sweet spirit as we are gathering together you women must be rather incredible i wish i could meet each one of you in person but thank you for the spirit that you bring through technology to me and to barb yep. and i know the lord is pleased with you i know he loves you i know he's pleased with where you are and he loves you enough but if you're not you can change you can re you can repent you can you can keep going on that path you don't you know you don't have to continue to carry those burdens and i just oh i bear my testimony so strongly of the savior's infinite atonement and the enabling power that that gives us and if we can learn to access that sisters there's no stopping there's no stopping us life will be joyous and filled with filled with many great adventures but we can access that and we can help each other do it and i say this in the name of jesus christ amen amen elaine thank you elaine just so you know somebody because i don't believe you speak spanish but you probably could understand it somebody just put mi presidente las mujeres so she's saying my my young woman's president how we love you so yes. that was just written in spanish for you just so you know um I, i will end with mine as well and elaine i i don't maybe there's something about this morning maybe it's a thanksgiving thing but i have been very tender today right. uh, i i i've been humbled as i've listened to these talks i've thought a lot about the atonement of jesus christ i've spent a lot of time in my scriptures this morning and um you know you're you're a marathoner elaine and and you're also a cheerleader and that's one of the things i think about a marathon i've never run a marathon i ruined my knee 23 miles in and i've never finished one and i <laughs> i had to go in for surgery and everything else but what i love about running marathons and half marathons and triathlons and things i used to do all the time my favorite part always was the people running beside me behind me in front of me cheering me on I loved that. I had a friend one time that she finished probably a good 30 minutes before I did a half marathon. She jogged all the way back and then jogged me to the end. I I mean and and I was dying, but that's who she was. She just wanted to make sure that we were all jogging along and she wasn't going to let me give up and I was going to get to that end of that marathon whether I liked it or not and I wasn't going to walk in this case. She was going to make sure that I moved the knee off the ground. You know, I like <sighs> But I appreciate that because she was putting forth that effort and she showed so much love. But it's not just her, it's everyone on the path. I I appreciate so many who are jogging along with us, who are walking along with us, who are crawling with bloody knees, but we're all getting to the finish line. This life is a marathon. It's not a race. We're we're all on this and we all set our own personal goals and we're all trying to get there and we all have the things that we need to do to get there. We all have our our own little water here or the way that we get energy here all of us have different ways and that's that that is the gospel of Jesus Christ the marathon is like the plan of salvation principles of getting us to the end of that race and we all have our personal applications of how we're going to get there and the lord knows each of us individually so i i will just simply testify as elaine has testified and i'll finish off with this at the very end he says um my dear brothers and sisters do you want to be happy stay on the covenant path your life will be easier, happier and filled with joy. Our savior is inviting us, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He is the living Christ. He carries our burdens and makes our life easier. And then he finishes in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I finish with that as well. I I I like the prophet and like Elaine. I I beg you and I appreciate you helping me stay on this covenant path. It is a crazy world out there. But there is one true God, there is one true savior. There is one true gospel, there is one true covenant path. We're all coming to that covenant path perhaps in a different way and walking it in a different way, but it is the right path. 
It is the only path that leads to eternal happiness. It is the only path that le leads to us having eternal joy, being with who, where, where, and, and having the right body, as this President Nelson says, it's thinking celestial. So I testify of that as well. I want to have all of us be together eternally happy. That's, there's nothing more than I want is to have people happy eternally and full of joy. So Elaine, thank you. And thank you to that person who put that definition of 1828 on, on joy as well. Thank you all. We love you. We'll see you next Monday. And please feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to, to post some of these principles and doctrines. But more importantly, I hope we're helping you in some way find those principles and recognize those doctrines as well. We don't, Elaine and I do not want you to, to be dependent upon us. We are trying to help you do it yourself. We want you to be spiritually self-reliant. So I'm happy to put some on there. But more importantly, we hope that you are really digging in deep and learning how to find those principles and doctrines yourself. But we're, we are here to guide on the side and cheer on the path right along with you because we know we need it. Lady Lane. You both. Love you, Barb. Love you guys. Love you all. We Thank love all of you. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for teaching us. Yep. See you next Goodbye, Monday. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great Bye -bye. week. Bye-bye.